Today we are here and today we expect here in this place touch of heaven for our life. Amen? Amen. I don't know how about you, but I am coming here with expectation that Lord will change my life again and again and again, you know? I'm excited that he touched my life. I'm excited that he changed my life. But still every day I need new new oil, you know, new rivers of Holy Spirit. So I'm telling you, if you are coming with expectation, God will do something this morning, you know. We're traveling ar around the world a lot by plane, you know, and sometimes the trip takes 24 hours or even more. So we are not sure every day if, if when we arrive, somebody will give us some meal or not. So always before I arrive, I, I ask, can you give me more chicken, please, you know, before I arrive? Just give me more chicken or pasta, whatever. Just how many of you travel in economy and you know what you mean? Chicken or pasta, yeah? <laughs> so I ask, give me more chicken. You know why? Because I'm not sure if when I arrive, somebody wait for me and say, hey, come on, let's go to a good restaurant. So I'm not sure. So I prepare for maybe for the next two days, you know. Who knows? And one day, one day also before trip to Australia, I ate a lot, you know, double portion of chicken. And when I just arrived, I said, okay, I'm done for the next eight hours. And when I just met pastor at the terminal, he spoke to me, Jakub, I hope you are so hungry because I have a reservation in the best restaurant. <laughs> no way. You know, they could invite me to the best restaurant in the world. If I'm not hungry, if I'm not hungry, I will not receive. If you are not hungry, you will not receive. God is here. Holy Spirit is here. He is ready to change your life. But he wants to see desperation in your heart. He wants to see hunger in your life, you know. Every day, he's Alpha and Omega. He, he's unlimited. He can do whatever, whatever he wants. But question is, if we will allow him, you know, 22 years of my life, I don't allow God to come to my life and change my life. But someday, one day, something happened, you know, because I born in Christian family. My parents are pastors. When I born, they also were pastors. And so I was... I was every Sunday attending to Sunday school, you know, listening about Noah, about Ark, you know, and about everything, you know, I was painting animals, and I say, oh, this giraffe is going to Ark of Noah, you know, and, and, and even when sometimes some preacher was coming from different countries, he said, you know, Bible said in chapter 3, in, in Romans chapter 3, verse 20, I said, no, 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 it's 19, no 20, you know, so I, I was growing up in family when they teach me a lot, they teach me a lot, they, they equip me a lot, but they can equip me with knowledge, but they cannot equip me with presence of God, only Holy Spirit can equip me with his presence, you know, so it was a, the big problem in my life, head full, but no experience. So I had just one dream, to be a soccer player. Why? Every young boy wants to be a soccer player. Me too. So just one problem, because our town is just 16,000 16, people. So no option to do career, you know, not big club, not big coaches, not big stadiums. So I had a dream that one day big famous team will call me and, and they will, you know, call and say, Jacob, we saw you come to us and play for us, you know. Every day morning, every morning wake up with this dream. And when I was 12, it was a vacation time, no school, you can sleep, no limited, you know. And my dad came to my room around 6 or 7 a.m. And he woke up me suddenly and he said, they call you, they call you. I said, who? <laughs> they call you from Premier League. They saw you in one game. And they said that they are traveling now in two days to different country, to other country, to special camp, like seven days, seven days time to, to prepare for season. And they said they have one free seat, one free place, and you can go there because they saw that they checked you before. So I said, yeah, let's go there. So when I came there, after just short time, they told me, okay, call to your parents, you are not coming back home. We take you. You go with us. I said, okay, if you want me to your team, to your city, 
you have to give me a house. Why house? Because they told me that it's a special place where all young people live together, you know, and then some people uh, care for us and protect us and everything. I said, no, 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 I, I don't want to go there. There will be a party, there will be alcohol, they will have drugs. I, I don't want that kind of things. I'm from good family, I'm from Christian family. I'm scared of that kind of things. Give me a house. So when I was 12 years old, they gave me two floors house. Can you imagine? They, was, they were really desperate to, to catch me. So they gave me a house and from 12 years old, I started to live alone. Alone, alone shopping, alone paying bills, alone doing everything. It was crazy, you know? It was really crazy and hard time because normally you want to be with your mommy, you know, and say, mommy, do a sandwich for me, please. <laughs> or whatever. But things start going faster and before 16 years old, I received an invitation, let's say, calling to international team of Poland. So four years before, four years earlier, I was where? In small town. Now I'm in, in big field, in big stadium, you know. So this is for me something big. And after that, four of the best teams in Poland offered me a contract. So I changed my city again and, and I moved to different city. I signed a great, great contract. And when came first salary to my account, can you imagine you are 16 years old, you have your account and you have your contract for the next two years and salary, bam! When I saw these numbers on my account, I said, wow. And I said this, I said, let's try everything what this world can propose me. And I decide to leave God. I really decide, I understood my decision, I understand my decision, I just left God and with running, run in high speed, bam, into the scene into the crazy life, to drugs, to alcohol, to parties, to night style of life. And after two years, I was really the worst guy in my team, you know. Everybody said, man, you are really crazy. You are, you are crazy guy. And I really, I lost, I lost my mind. I, I lost everything with my parents. I thought in that time that I lost everything with my parents sit in me, you know. They were, they were sitting every day. We want you to be a good child. We want you to, to serve Lord. We want you to be in church, to be in worship team. You know, I finished music school. I played drums, guitar, piano. So they had a dream for me, be in church, serve the Lord. But I totally choose different direction and it hurts them. It really hurts them. And they had a problem because many years, you know, Sunday by Sunday, they have to stand before people and preach that about transformation, about that God is good. And they know in their head that few hundred kilometers far away, their son is crazy. And their son is crazy and addicted from many, many crazy things. So, so they, they was going through troubles. And when I was 20, I had a problem with my knee. I had a problem with my ACL. So I had one operation and six months break. I had to go through hard and, and difficult rehabilitation. And after six months, I came back to soccer and I came back again to crazy life, to again to drugs, again to alcohol, again to party. And, and again, I lose my mind. And then call me my father. And he said to me, okay, man, no more. God spoke to us that now it's time to change your life. And really, he spoke to us that in three weeks, we will have conference in our town and we'll be a preacher from far away, Pastor Alejandro Arias. <laughs> and Pastor Alejandro Arias is coming to our town and you will be there because God spoke to us that this is the time to change your life. I said, mm-hmm, and what else? He said, if you will not come from your own motivation, ambulance will bring you for this conference, but you will be there. Can you imagine your pastor tell you that ambulance will bring you to church? <laughs> so I said, okay, I promise you I will not come. Because in three weeks, I have very important game. 
It's, my, it's the league time. It's, it's, it's my career. It's my, it's my dream. It's my work. I, I cannot just say, you know, I go to Christian conference with Pastor, <laughs> excuse me, Alejandro Arias. Who is him? No matter, just come. Just come. So I said, no way. One week later, two weeks before conference, I play a game, very important game, running around, jumping to ball, bam. And suddenly, in my knee, the same knee, the same ACL, again, everything on my knee crashed inside. You know who helped me to, to arise? Ambulance. <laughs> An ambulance brought me to the best private clinic in Warsaw, capital of Poland. When I came there, they checked my knee, they checked everything, and they said, okay, man, no more soccer, no more professional sport. I said, how is it possible that today you talk to me that no more sport? We have high level of, me of everything, hospitals, you know, medicine, every, whatever, give me something, I need to come back to sport. They said, no more, you need operation for 50,000 and I don't have any money, why? I lose everything in casino. And I had problem in banks because I took a lot of money from bank to play casino, you know, crazy Jacob from Poland. <laughs> so no money, no contract, no hope, no leg. <laughs> so you don't know what to do. So I said, this guy is crazy, he's professional, no, no way, I go to second clinic. So I went to second clinic and they said exactly the same. Exactly the same. So I said, okay, these two guys, maybe they are crazy. I came to third clinic. And they said exactly the same. So I understood that really, really no hope. No hope. So I entered to my car and I just drove 300 kilometers to my town. I couldn't walk. So I, I just left a, a car. I just took my leg like this. And my brother, my younger brother, I have, I have four years younger brother, he brought me a crutches. In the moment when I took crutches to my hands, I understood I really have a problem. I really have a problem. My career finished. My dreams finished. My identity. You know, it's not just my hobby. It's not just my, 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 uh, my favorite sport. It's my life. Is my identity, everything who I am is soccer. And now soccer shake, my life shake, my, my, my life, no hope anymore. So I said, I have really problem. So when I entered to, to house of my parents, my father looked in my eyes and he said, I told you you will be here. <laughs> I, I feel like prodigal son, really. You know, I know that sounds funny for you, because Jacob is funny, but, but it was not funny for me, you know? And he said, you came in right time because now we go to conference. <laughs> so come with us to conference. I said, are you kidding me? It really happened, can you imagine? He's a prophet or pastor? <laughs> so I came to the conference and there, there he is, Alejandro Arias, but he came with some, someone else, Holy Spirit. He came with him, so he started talk about Jesus, you know. He started, you know, Pastor Alejandro, yeah? yeah. <laughs> I love it. I said, I love it. But still he's attacking my head, you know, just boom, and nothing else, boom. And suddenly he spoke, Jesus died on the cross for your sin. And when he shouted, I feel like suddenly, boom, my eyes open. My eyes opened in one second, I, and I understood in one moment, I'm a sinner. I understood I'm a sinner, I live in darkness. If I will die now, I go to hell. No hope, no hope. You know, and if you are in sin, and if you live in darkness, and when the presence of the Lord is coming to you, you want to do one thing, you want to die. If you live without forgiveness, if you live in darkness, and when His holiness come, you feel like who I am, you know, like I'm, I'm naked, I, I'm, I'm zero, I, I want to just disappear from this place. So I just cover my head in my hands. I was so ashamed, not of people, but of myself before Him. 
And I just close my eyes. I keep my head in my hands. And I said, Lord, if you see me, if you hear me, now is the time for your move. Because if not, I will die here in a second. When I spoke it, suddenly Pastor Alejandro stopped preach. He left platform. He came to me and he lifted his hand and he said, Lord is saying, now, you call me and I'm coming. You call me and I'm coming. And because you call me, I'm coming and I will change your life and I will transform you and I will make you a testimony and I will send you around the world to show that I am God of miracles. Boom. Wow. Fire came on me. I just felt like a, like a, like a boom, you know, zero reaction, just just disappear, and suddenly, suddenly, I start cry, cry, and cry, and ask for forgiveness, and he changed my life. In one hour on the floor, he totally changed my life. He forgave me, he cleansed me, he washed me in his blood. And after one hour, they they had a pr pray time, you know, ministering for people. I just said. Oh, freedom. First time, real freedom. You know, I try really a lot of crazy stuff, you know, in my life. It was real deal, real freedom. Holy Spirit is bringing freedom. So I said, wow. And Pastor Alejandro came to me and he said, God just started with you. Now it's time for your healing. Wow, looks like all inclusive today. So he just started praying for my knee. He said, in the name of Jesus, we command this knee. Do, 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 do. Boom, I feel fire on my knee. I said, wow, not just in my heart, but now over my body. And he said, try to do something. Try to do something. I said, I cannot walk. He said, try. So slowly I start walk. And he said, no pain. Wow. How is it possible? No pain. But you know, in your mind, mind is telling you, impossible. Actually, I came through this six months. I know what it means, has destroyed ACL. So I said, no, 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 no. I, I, I cannot just run. But then I said, if I'm really healed, and he really telling me that I'm healed, so let's try. No pain! I just ran away from the church and started running around church. Can you imagine? Crazy guy ran out from church. Can you imagine somebody's telling you, hey, quick interview, what happened? I just got healed. I'm healed. I ran around church. I came back to church five minutes later and I shout, I'm healed. Jesus, heal me. Jesus, heal me. Everybody's shocked. My family. <laughs> me. I came back to house, I closed the door, I closed the door to my room, I just sit and, and I look to the table, documents from three clinics, crutches, I look my knee and again these crutches and documents and I said, Lord, I was listening about you, I was reading about you, but I don't know you. Show me who you are. Show me your glory. I want to see you. I don't want to just see your hand. I, just, I don't want to just see your blessing. I don't want to just see your miracle. Show me your glory. Show me who you are. So the next day, I took key from the church. Uh, no service, but I, I, I organized one, private with Holy Spirit, I just closed the door, I left key inside, I off lights and I just play worship songs and I just pray. And eight hours, eight hours praying, show me who you are, show me what happened, why it happened, what is the purpose for my life, why you saved me, why you healed me. And you know what happened after eight hours? Nothing, <laughs> just nothing, you know. We, we sometimes expect that all life we run alone and just one day we will say, oh, I, I have three days, so maybe just now, okay, Lord? 
just now between lunch and dinner. No, no, no. Spend time with him. Give him time, okay? We have to follow him, not he, us. We have to follow him. Jesus said, follow me. Follow me. So I said, okay, not today, tomorrow. Next day, eight hours. No answer. Third day, next day, next day, next day. Ten days, eight hours per day. 22 years old guy praying 80 hours. No answer. After two weeks, no answer. I said, okay, Lord. Knowing day, you will answer me in night. So I start praying night. You know, desperation. You remember what I said in the beginning? Desperation, hunger. You have to be thirsty. You have to say, Lord, or everything, or nothing. I want you. I really want you. So after 19 days without answer, I said, okay, Lord. The last day, tomorrow, last day, will decide about my future. I cannot pray 20 days, 8 hours per day, because one day they will find me on the floor, you know? <laughs> so I just took the key of the church, I closed, I closed church again, and I start praying. I said, Lord, show me who you are. I want to know you. I want to know you again and again, and I want to see you. I want to experience you. I want to feel you. I want again enter to your presence. And I just down my knee. I just close my eyes. And I said, Lord, if you will not show me who you are, take me to home before time. I don't want to live here anymore without you. I don't want to live here without you because this world is crazy. It's dry, empty. No joy, no satisfaction, just empty makeup is saying I'm happy but inside depression. I said, give me your presence. I need your air. And suddenly I felt somebody enter to the room. I feel somebody enter to the room. And you know it's crazy because you know you closed door, you left key inside, and you felt somebody came. Just somebody came, and I feel he's coming to me. I feel like he's coming closer and closer. Mix of feelings, you know, mix of emotion. Excited, little bit scared, little bit happy, you know, everything. And suddenly, boom, river of love. Boom, river of freedom. And I just, I just fell, and I, can I show you what I did? I said, Lord. Wow, I want to live for you. Your presence is a million times better than all of this rubbish around. Lord, I dedicate my life to you. No by words, no by promises, but I will serve you. Send me. Send me. I will share about your love. I will share about repentance. I will share about your forgiveness. Do whatever you want with my life. And I just rest in his presence. Oh, I feel it now. <laughs> and I just rest and enjoy of his presence. Mm. Oh. And I came back to my house and I opened the computer and there is a message from Alejandro Arias. <laughs> Just one hour ago. Come with me to Ecuador, South America and help me in ministry. I said, 20 days ago, I came to Christ. I'm not sure if I'm ready to ministry. He said, don't talk to me anymore about your past because God has a future. So I just, two months later, I'm on board of Boeing 737, flying to Ecuador. And I just came, 2,000 people. I said, what's going on here? What I'm doing here? I said, brother, 
why I'm here? He said, you will help me to pray for people. I said, me for people? Two months ago, just two months ago, he said, no more. God has a future. You will pray for people. When he entered to the stage, he started habla español, talking Spanish. And he said something and everybody look at me. So I said, what did you say? He said, I just introduced you to preach. I said, no. <laughs> I told you two months. Let's welcome Jacob from Poland. There was a stage around one and a half meter high and the, st and the stairs and small curtain. So I, I covered with this curtain and I said, Lord! I'm not a preacher. Why you are doing it for me? But my lips, my tongue is your tool. Use me for your glory. Use me for your glory. So when they gave me a microphone, I felt like fire came. I start to speak just a message from Holy Spirit. No notes, no verse Bible, just boom. People cry. People enter to, to the front. People run to altar. I said, everybody who need fresh air, who need fresh touch of heaven, come to the front. 700 people run to the front. We start to pray for them. Just boom, healing, boom, deliverance, boom, healing, boom, healing shock I saw so strong move of God and there one lady play piano and I said Lord am I in heaven already or no so good atmosphere so beautiful lady playing piano I said wow Lord why you send me here today this lady from piano is my wife she is the daughter of pastor from South America Today she live with me, she sent you greetings from Poland. She's not with us because she's with our small baby, 15 months old. And, but now the best before us, you know. We have a few minutes to pray. You know, I can give you a nice testimony. My testimony will not change your life. I can give you a nice verse Bible, verse Bible will not change your life. But the author of this verse, author of this testimony is here you know 26 hours in plane to come to Melbourne I said Lord why why I'm happy but why 26 hours for Sunday morning service you know why I said okay Lord no matter why I'm ready I'm ready so I pray tonight I fell asleep I came to bed around 11 p.m. But at 1 a.m. he woke up me. And he don't let me sleep until 5.30 in the morning. This time not jet lag. This time was encounter again with Holy Spirit. From 1 to 3, weeping, crying. So strong presence of God. I said, Lord, one dream release your presence this morning release this presence because your presence will change people so church 